Welcome to another episode of the Arkansas Football Recruiting Report with Otis Kirk. I'm Will Moclair. Otis, big news today. I think we found out, what, 30 minutes ago that Arkansas is headed to the Liberty Bowl to play Kansas, another 6-6 six and six team. That was a team that really had a hot start to the season. The media was really loving them. They rattled off five wins. They ended the season 6-6, six and six, eighth in the Big 12. I know this is something that we talked about last week. You really wanted to go to Memphis. How are you feeling now that it's all set and final? Yeah, I'm not surprised. The reason I wanted Memphis was simply because of the the fans in eastern Arkansas. That there was no Little Rock game this year. This is a – and gas is high, inflation. This is a chance for fans to go see the Razorbacks who haven't been able to come to fail every weekend. Well, I didn't really – I mean, I would have preferred – we, like what, Las Vegas, if it was just me, you know, but it's not just me. I'm thinking of the fan. I'm thinking the fans that didn't get to come to Arkansas. We're thinking about the fans. Yeah, and plus I talked to the Liberty Go. Uh, no, I can't talk. I'm sorry. I talked to the Liberty Go guy when he was here for the, I think, the Liberty game. Uh, and and you know, he really they like Arkansas, and it's a, it's a, and I, I was over there when they beat Kansas State. Arkansas did. It's a sweet drive. It's a sweet trip, and uh, you know it's afternoon 4 30 game i want to say maybe four i believe it's 4 30 kickoff on espn uh it's it's a it's a nice drive for the arkansas fans and for the media and stuff and you know uh i haven't had a chance to look that far ahead but maybe the lakers are in memphis during that time you know that be added bonus man that happened once when they played or when they played wisconsin in orlando I walked, I pulled into the mo the hotel in orlando will looked across the street and there's the arena for the uh, Orlando Magic. I walked across the street, bought a ticket, went to the game at night. Kobe and the Lakers beat the Dwight Howard and the Magic. So, and that's all I'm going to talk about the Lakers. But I'm just saying, I would love for the Lakers to be playing while I'm over there. That would be awesome. I'm really excited to go. It's going to be my first ball game. And I okay. think, you know, Kansas is obviously an exciting uh, start to their season. But I think yeah. it's a very winnable game for Arkansas. And I think, as yeah. you said, I mean, Little Rock fans, easiest drive in the world. Arkansas fans, more than drivable, I, especially with the way that airlines have been. I think that this is best case for everybody. Like yeah, I the, think if I'm not mistaken, we not. Yeah, I. You know, we talked off the air, but I'm almost certain at some point their text Kansas lost their quarterback. I don't know how long the extended period was. If it was an extended period, or if he's back, I really haven't. I've been tied up with recruiting since six a.m. this morning, so I haven't even had time to look at Kansas. But I do know. That uh, I at some point their quarterback got hurt, and I think that's about the time the tailspin started, you know, downward spiral. But uh, yeah, it's it's a very wonderful game. I, you know, the games that I was hearing was Oklahoma, Baylor, Kansas, Oklahoma State, and, all those, and I thought all of those are winnable games if Arkansas plays their capabilities. And and and, but I'm proud they're going to Liberty Bowl. I really am. I mean, like I said, prefer me of the bowls either uh, before they lost maybe Jacksonville or. To Las Vegas, but of the, I'd really go to Memphis and Houston, you know, and and, and like it's a lot easier drive for the fans. So it's it's good. It's a game we can all go watch and uh, see how it happens. I hope it, the, the you know last time it was over Arkansas beat Kansas State in the uh, bowl game, and uh, you know and uh, it was a good game. And uh, so you know it, it'll be yeah. I've heard people say, oh, I don't want to go there. It'll be cold. Yeah, it's cold. It's winter, man. It's winter time, people. I mean, you know, it's winter time. It's December, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to make you stand out in the field for the whole game with me, pal. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy for me to say this when yeah, I'm sitting be in the up press, the press box, box eating hot dogs. You know, so I don't yeah. Hear you yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know. So I mean, yeah. So, I, but but when they whine to me about being cold, I just think I'm in the press box. That's a you problem. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> you no, problem, I, man. I am very excited. It'll be fun. All jokes aside. Let's talk about what you've been working on all day, though. We're going to get into those who have already committed. We'll start off with Malachi Singleton. Any update on that end? Yes, sir. Great news. He is 100% committed to Arkansas. He's been committed for quite a while, but he flirted with UCL. He said he, he sat down with his family, talked the whole thing over, and he is going to Arkansas. He was here for an official visit. It's, there's no drama. It even, even. If Kendall Browse were to leave, he's still coming to Arkansas because he said he trusts Sam Pittman to get a good coach. I mean, he obviously wants Kendall to stay, and there's, and I'm not saying he's leaving. I mean, I, you know, I'm just saying that he even said if there was a coach, he still come because he trusts Sam Pittman to hire a great coach. So, so either way, 
Malachi is a hog. I know there's been rumors. Mike called me a week or two ago asking about Malachi. He asked Mike questions. But Mike can tell him he's 100% committed. He's solid as heck to Arkansas. And that's good news. And uh, Because that gives them a great quarterback in this class. And, you know, if he had decommitted, there's not there's not another Malachi Singleton out there, I'm telling you, Will. You know, and, and I'm on I said on here even back in when he committed, and I've said back in the summer, I think Malachi was the best option for Arkansas out there. They brought in a five star at the April 16th scrimmage, or they brought him in for but I'm telling you, I think Malachi is a better fit for what Arkansas does than what Jaden Rashad would have been. I just think he's perfect. I've talked to recruits like Jaden Ham, uh Jamar Easter. Uh, Luke Hayes and those guys in, in Malik, Micah Tease, and they all tell me that Malachi is the perfect quarterback for Arkansas. So the players are saying that too. It's not just me running my mouth. It's it players saying, and these are kids that will be catching passes from him, and they're tickled to death he's coming. So, yeah, it's good. That's great news, not good news. That's great news about Malachi Singleton. Yeah. Oh, just talking about quarterbacks, how do you feel about uh, your boy KJ coming back for one more year? <laughs> uh, that was the best. Biggest news, Sam. I tell you what, when you combine KJ coming back with Malachi being solid, that's as good a news as Sam Pittman shouldn't even take a Christmas present. He should tell his wife, I've already got my Christmas present. I'm not taking it. He and Kendall Brown should tell her families, no more Christmas presents. I just got my double dose of Christmas present. That's as good a news as it can get. Hey, I'm one of those that happens to think KJ's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So, I mean, you know how I feel about KJ coming back because I think he's one of the best. Not not just in the SEC or this and that. I think he's one of the best in the country. Well, if you're one of the best in the SEC, no matter which position or who you are, you're one of the best in the country. And I think he is, and uh, that's big news for Sam Pittman, Kendall Brawls, that whole offense. Or Razorback back fans, you know, and, and it's good to see KJ coming back. I had a feeling he would, but, you know, your feelings – can change at the drop of a pin. So it was it was good to hear KJ say it instead of me thinking that because I my brain fools me sometimes, man. It tricks me. So uh, you know, uh, but anyway, it's that was great news. It wasn't good. That was great. It's kind of like I said about Malachi. That's great news, man. Yeah, it it really was. I think it's a present for all of Arkansas, not just the coaching yeah. staff. Uh it's almost portal season. I know we've heard a lot about yeah. those who are headed into the portal on Arkansas yeah. side, but let's talk about those Maybe coming in, we've got Joshua Braun, uh, Jacoby Criswell, and Andre Armstrong that you want to talk about. What are you hearing on these fronts? Okay, Braun was here for an official visit this weekend, looking great on him. He was committed. He's 6'6", six, six, about 340, uh, 340, 335 pounds. He, I've had him list. He was six, 342 on the Florida roster. He's coming from Florida. He's an offensive line. He was committed to Sam Pittman at Georgia, but when Sam came here, he flipped to Florida, but he was here for an official visit this weekend. He and his wife and his mom were here. Nice people. My mother's a great person, you know, and uh, to meet them? real nice people. Yeah, she came with them. Yes, she was here, definitely was here. And uh, uh, Josh is going to be uh, announcing something pretty soon on his school. And so that was, you know, and, 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 it's looking really good. You know, Sam got him once. Maybe he can get him again. Uh, as far as uh, Jacoby Criswell, he announced today he's leaving North Carolina. He had told me on Thanksgiving that this was all getting ready to happen, or pretty much on Thanksgiving, he, this is all going to happen. Uh, he'll go into the portal tomorrow. You know, that's first day, kids. The reason Brian could commit, I mean, the reason Brian could visit, I'm sorry, not commit, but visit, because he's a grad transfer. That's the only ones that can go in the portal right now is the ones that's in the in the grad transfers. The rest of them have to wait till tomorrow. Even the high school kids, I wrote, I mean the uh, college kids at Arkansas that I wrote about all week about going to the portal. Technically, they can't go in there till tomorrow. Will so it, I should you know it's really they're not in the portal till tomorrow. Uh, Jacoby will go in the portal tomorrow, and I expect him to be announcing something very very soon. And uh, very good quarterback from Moralton, Arkansas. He went to North Carolina. I think he played – somebody told me he played one series in that game last night in their championship, uh, ACC championship game. I didn't watch it, but uh, someone was telling me he looked pretty good on that one drive he was in. He got beat out by a May kid that's expected to be one of the top players in the country at that position in upcoming drafts. But And then the other one was Andre Armstrong. We talked – we touched on him last week. I talked to him after I talked to you, though, and uh, had a story on Pink Trail Nation, Hogville, and uh, Andre will be here Friday. There again. 
same situation. He's not a grad transfer. So we Andre had to wait till next weekend to start taking we had to wait till after Monday to start taking visits because he'll go in the portal on Monday. Uh Andre's down to Arkansas and Missouri. I feel really good about him. Hey, I feel good about all three of those transfers we're talking about. I feel really good about it. I feel great about Braun. I feel great about Chriswell. I feel really good about uh, Andre. The only reason I'm a little bit hesitant on him, I haven't talked to him since he decided to visit Missouri. When I talked to him, Arkansas was the only visit he had set up, and he he contacted me and wanted me to break the the story that he was visiting Arkansas next weekend. I said, "You sure you don't want to do it?" And he said, "No, I want you to." So I I, I put it out there. He was coming in on Friday for an official visit, but uh, I feel good about him. I think Arkansas is in good shape with all three of those kids. That's three. If they get those three kids. That's a win for the portal right there. I mean, no matter who else they get, if you get Joshua Braun, if you get Jacoby Criswell, and you get Andre Armstrong, that's that's a win right there, man. And then the rest of it to me is – and they'll get more, but that's gravy. You've got to get some more players, and they will. But I'm just saying those are three right now that either – that I know are tied to Arkansas. Like I said, Brian was actually here this weekend. Uh, I haven't had a chance to reach out to Jacoby to see if he's visiting next weekend. I will. I just haven't had time. I mean, I yeah. pulled into my house from chasing down recruits about 10 minutes before we went on the air. And uh, I'd been, I left at 6 a.m. and got back here about 10 minutes before we <laughs> recorded this segment. So it's been a hectic day, but it's a good day. Man, I got something to talk about. Good news just keeps flowing out here, you know. And uh, but Braun, uh, Florida State, Penn State, Oklahoma State, and UCL. That was the other one. Those were the mm -hmm. five. It was Arkansas, UCL, Florida State, Penn State, and uh, Oklahoma State. That was his top five. But I think he's closing in on a decision. We'll see what he announces here in the coming days. And uh, and go from there. Be six six, three hundred thirty five pound offensive lineman. Played at Florida. Uh, I think I said Chris Well was playing at North North Carolina. I don't think I said on Armstrong. He was at Texas A&M Commerce. He had over 60 receptions for over 1,000 yards. He had 13 touchdowns, Will. And he's got – he went into the portal. or He announced he was going into the portal. He had 17 offers almost in two or three days. Wow. He picked up 17 offers in two or three days. This is a kid. He's 6'6", 189 pounds, a wide receiver. You don't think that's a mismatch for, and, a, and a nightmare for an opposing yeah. defensive back? You know, six six, and even he told me he said, "Look, they're listed me at six six on my on the roster." He said, "I'm really six four and a half, six five. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's a lot. You know, how many six four and a half, six five cornerbacks are out there? You know, or even safety? Not very many. There's not very many Steve Atwaters out there. So safeties that size. So, uh, no, it's, it's in, a, been, in, a, in a perfect world, we get all three. Who do you think is the most important? position wise well i think i think braun and armstrong would have a chance to play quicker than jacoby would because jacoby's gonna i mean you got kj coming back next year doesn't mean jacoby can't compete with him but let me say this i so i think the other two would have a chance to play quicker i don't know what any of them more important right. now. let me say this will if, if, if everything right falls now. like well, let me say this. Let me say this on the quarterback room. If it falls like I think it will, you'll have KJ Jefferson, uh, and I'm not putting him any more. Yeah. Malachi Singleton well, and Jacoby Well, I think it's safe to say KJ is at the top here. Well, no, yeah, right. But I mean, but you got Malachi yeah. and Jacoby. That's three quarterbacks. That will be one of the best quarterback rooms I've ever seen at Arkansas. If if that if it happens like I think, and the only thing is lacking right now is, is waiting for Jacoby to announce. You know, if he announces for because Malachi is one hundred percent solid. Uh, KJ's done announced he's coming back, and Malachi will have a story today saying that he's one hundred percent solid. So I mean, if, if Jacoby comes, that's the best quarterback room I've seen at Arkansas maybe ever in a long time. Maybe not ever, but in a long time. I remember one time there was Scott Bull. Uh, Mike Kirkland uh, and a bunch of those guys, and they've had some great rooms there. But, but I mean, recent years that will be before. I will say this: if KJ were to get hurt next year, it won't be an automatic L if if Jacoby or Malachi has to go in. There. I think that's a big difference. Those kids are real, the real deal, and yeah. uh, both of them, especially the way that this season played out. If we had had, not to say a more competent backup, but if we had somebody who had played closer to the level of KJ, I think we'd be looking at. Well, here's well, what happens. Put a number on it, but yeah, we, we well, here's it. what happens when you have three quarterbacks like that. They all get better because there's competition right. at right. practice. 
even if KJ's number one, which he is, but even yeah. that, there's competition and it makes everybody better, Will. It, 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 that's what you want. You don't think Rocket got better because of AJ Green and Rashad, mm -hmm. you know, Dominion being behind him? I mean, it makes you better when you've got competent, and, and not saying anybody's incompetent, but I'm just saying when you've got competition like that, it, all across the board, it makes everybody better. And it, you know, you can't get complacent, is what I'm saying. And, and, and that, that, if Jacoby announces for Arkansas, like I think he will, and Braun announces for Arkansas, like I think he will, and Armstrong, Armstrong and House of Parks, I like I would, I think you will. Then you're looking at you started the transfer portal in a with a win, win, win. Then you go from there and you start picking up some other players, you know, defensive line, uh defensive backs, you know, and uh, you know, whatever you need, whatever Sam and them think they need. And I'm sure there will be some defensive backs on that list and some safeties and stuff. Like I said, I it'll really break loose tomorrow because that's when they can officially go in the portal right now. It's just saying I'm going to, or I'm in the portal, but they're really not in the portal. You know, I wrote about kids last week about I'm going to transfer. Portal. Well, tomorrow they will, but uh, it's just, it, it's a deal where it, it fans got under. And really I thought Arkansas came out of this week. This was a week when it was thought they might just take a ton of hits. There were some people predicting doom and gloom. Yeah, and really, they did that bad. They lost, no, no, no. They lost Slusher, which was expected. He was a starter. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Hazelwood and Ricky Stromberg are not going to play in the boat. They're going to the NFL. Hey, when a kid can achieve his dream Good and go you. to the NFL, then you can't – They, I, that's not a lose situation. That's win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Jaden came to Arkansas from Oklahoma, had by far his best statistical year, beat the heck out of what he did his best year at yeah. OU. That's a win. Drew mm -hmm. Sanders comes to Arkansas. He hasn't announced anything yet. His stats were a million times better at Arkansas than they were at Alabama. So it's a, those are when you get kids here and you have win, win, win situations, it's not bad news if they go to the NFL. But, folks, I mean, that other kids are watching that. I'm telling you, Malachi, I asked Malachi, I said, what did you think about KJ coming back? He's going to be a sponge just like, KJ was for Felipe Franks. He's going to learn from KJ. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to soak in all that stuff. I'm just, I don't know the exact word. Something like he wants to soak in all the knowledge of KJ and it will make him a better player. And see, that's what you want. You want team players. You want kids that are willing to learn. And uh, that's what KJ did. He stayed behind transfer quarterbacks for two years. Uh, ben Hicks, uh, Nick Starkle, uh, Felipe Franks. And KJ could have easily said, Hey, I'm tired of this. I'm out of here. Right. He didn't. That's why I will always admire the heck out of that kid. I will always admire KJ for that. Not just for that, but, but for that alone would be enough to always admire that kid for the rest of my life. I mean, I really just, he, he took the challenge. He didn't tuck his tail and run. He took the challenge and stayed with it. And that's, and you see the results are paying off for KJ. Sometimes patience is your best virtue. Not very many people have it in this day and age, and I'm as guilty as the next one. But sometimes it pays off to be patient. And what yeah. you turn and learn while you're not pout, but learn, soak in that knowledge. And that's what Malachi said he's going to do with KJ. And Jacoby, you know, he's he's he stayed for two or three years over at North Carolina, two years, I believe. And I mean, hey, you know, the kid sees the writing on the wall, he's gonna leave, and that's that's what the portal is for for kids like that are buried on the depth chart. You need to go somewhere else. So it's Arkansas is looking really good right now in the portal compared to what's going out and what's coming in. If they get what I think they're going to get, just the three I know are a win right there. So, yeah, let's yeah, we'll see where it leads. Otis, it'll be really exciting to see how this all shakes out. I as well admire KJ a lot. I'm happy he's staying. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see what the quarterback room could potentially look like, I think. Oh, it, it could Arkansas be strong. I'm excited as well. But, Otis, we're going to wrap things up. Thank you so yeah. much for being on with us today. As always, we really appreciate you and all of the, the hard work that you do for us. Uh, don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of the Arkansas Football Recruiting Report. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you so much, Will. Appreciate you, man. I really do.